Welcome to Northern California. It was six months ago at the New York International Auto Show where Toyota unveiled the all new 2019 RAV4. Well, guess what? Here it is, and almost a million of you have watched the video that I did on this vehicle, so obviously you're very interested in it. So let's take a look around. When you're the company's best-selling vehicle in Canada and the US, you better get it right and wow the people. The 2019 RAV4 is the latest Toyota to be introduced on Toyota's new global architecture. The only thing the new RAV shares with the soon-to-be previous model are maybe a few bolts. Other than that, it's a ground-up new car. It's pretty obvious that the styling of this fifth-generation RAV4 has had a dramatic change. Not saying that the previous generation was bad-looking, I think this one's just so much better looking. What started out as a cute ute has now grown into a bolder and sharper looking utility that seems to show some DNA from its pickup siblings. The general size is pretty close to the same but the wheelbase has been lengthened. The height is actually a little bit shorter so the center of gravity is now lower for better handling and stability but the ground clearance is actually more than the previous version. You'll notice that the new RAV has three different looks now. There's the standard RAV. Then the new Adventure, or in Canada, it's called the Trail Trim. Here you get a different paint scheme, different 19-inch alloy wheels, badging, different seats, and a multi-terrain selector for the all-wheel drive system. This also has an all-new torque vectoring system to aid in driving day-to-day -day handling as well as for more challenging situations. Lastly, the hybrid models. With another distinct look, I think these are going to be really popular, especially in this XSE trim, which is only available on the hybrid model. The RAV can be equipped with an automatic kick feature to open it, or of course, there is the lever. And inside, there's a lot of cargo room, like a ton. And if you want more, say you have something a little bit taller and you need a little bit more room, well, underneath this carpeted area, you can take this plastic and actually lower it down two inches. You have a compartment with netting there and overall just like a lot of room. And I like how it has a really nice low uh, load-in height as well. An all new interior for the RAV4, it looks really good. Let's start at the right side. They've integrated a new shelf now, similar to the Highlander. I like that, it's great to put your phone, your sunglasses, and then you get to the center. Standard seven inch screen or optional eight inch. This is the eight inch, it has a JBL sound system, it has Apple CarPlay, like all the new Toyota products have, but no Android Auto yet. They say they're still working on it. If you get a tech package, you have Navi, Below that, you have your heating controls. I like these larger dials. They have these uh, this rubber, it looks like, um, like a tire tread, but they'd be really easy to use if you had gloves on, let's say, in the wintertime. Uh, very straightforward. This is equipped with heated front seats. You can get heated rear seats as well as an optional heated steering wheel. There are five USBs for all the tech-savvy people out there. There's wireless charging on this one. Then you get the steering wheel. It's a very nice leather-wrapped steering wheel. In behind that, uh, standard 4.2-inch digital display in behind there, or an optional 7-inch that this one has as well. Now, if you notice on this XSC, it gets this huge panoramic roof that pretty well extends the entire uh, length of the roof. In Canada, we do not get that, unfortunately. Another thing different about the hybrid, you have blue stitching on the seats, on the dash, and if you go into the adventure trim or the trail trim in Canada, it comes in an orange stitching. Along with the standard backup camera, there's also available a 360 bird's eye view camera, and there's also a new rear view camera in the mirror, and that gives you an unobstructed view in case you have a car full of people or cargo in the back. In the rear seats, because of the TMGA, the new platform, they're able to position things differently and use even a, a thinner foam, a more dense foam, which means actually more room for passengers. Plus, you put the seats down, more cargo room. Speaking of cargo room, this hybrid's batteries are underneath the passenger seats, and there is no difference, no compromise between the gas or hybrid in terms of cargo capacity.
there are two power plants for the RAV4. The first is a two and a half liter four cylinder Atkinson cycle engine. Now it's new for the RAV4. It's a new engine, but kind of not new. You see, it's the same engine that's in the new Camry, yet it's different though because they've tuned it for the RAV, meaning since SUVs are heavier, they've tuned it so uh, the power comes on a little earlier, torque comes on a little earlier uh, to get that the larger mass moving uh, faster. Now that motor is also more efficient and even bef before we talk about the engine being more efficient, the entire RAV is more efficient. The new TNGA platform itself is four to five percent more efficient for the RAV. And then you get, uh, the RAV is also about 50 kilograms lighter, so there's a few percent right there for efficiency saved. And as well, the new gas version is equipped with the brand new eight-speed automatic transmission opposed to the outgoing six-speed transmission. You add all of that up and it makes it more efficient. But, of course, there is a two-wheel drive, a front-wheel drive version of the RAV as well. Uh, there's the all-wheel drive, which I'm sure uh, most Canadians will choose the all-wheel drive. Now, if you get the gas version, it has a, a new feature where if you are not under a lot of load, let's say, let's say you're on the freeway, it's flat, and you're just cruising along, the rear wheels for the drive shaft disconnects. So there's a zero drag, which means better fuel economy. We've had a chance to drive both all over from winding canyon roads. We went through uh, the Pebble Beach 17 mile drive area. It's, it's great, of course, we're not driving very fast here, but on the twisty roads, on the highways, it really has a substantial feel to it for a RAV4. And also it's very, it just feels very solid and, and planted. Then we get to a very interesting part of the story and that's the hybrid story. You see, this hybrid, this is the XSC we're driving, but this hybrid is the top of the RAV4s, meaning it's got the best fuel economy, of course, that, that's what you'd expect for a hybrid, but it's also the top performer. So power-wise, uh, the gas version puts out 203 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. This hybrid puts out 219 horsepower, and we don't have the torque number yet, but we'll show you the performance in a little bit here. And what Toyota is trying to do, and they're really good at making hybrids, is making the hybrid uh, appeal to more people and increasing their sales. And the way they're going to do that as well is they've narrowed the actual gap between the gas version's price and the hybrid. So, you know what? If you want to save some fuel and have more performance, it's almost more of a no brainer right now. What's kind of cool is I had a chance to sit down and talk to the chief engineer of the RAV4. And it was great to get that type of insight of what it takes to develop a vehicle like this. But not just that, when he designed this vehicle and oversaw everything, it wasn't just about staying within the parameters of numbers. I could really experience the passion that he had for making this vehicle engaging and exciting to drive and that was one of his goals it wasn't just about uh, fuel economy it's about like especially for the hybrid he wanted to make the hybrid fun to drive and just basically change uh, the perception of what people think hybrids are of course the hybrid only comes in all-wheel drive and it doesn't have the drive shaft it can send 50 percent of the power to the rear the hybrid system with electric motors Electric motors on this hybrid system are also 30% more powerful, but they can also work like a torque vectoring system, which by the way, the gas version now has a torque vectoring system, which is first for the RAV4, but the hybrid version has a similar uh, effect, but without using a drive shaft, it's using the electric motors in the rear to control the power. One thing that I really noticed on the hybrid is how easy the hybrid system goes into straight EV mode and how much longer you can drive an EV compared to my Highlander Hybrid, which you really have to tippy-toe around the accelerator to keep it in that nice, sweet EV zone. We said we'd make our own performance numbers, so here we go. We're gonna put it into sport mode. And 
we are at 60 right there so we'll put a counter on that or or basically check the little playhead see how long it took us to to get to 60 there Okay, so most people will not take their RAV4 real off-roading, but you know, the occasional time you might be driving up to the cottage or on the weekend you're going camping and you have some, uh, some rough roads or some logging roads, this RAV4 will handle it no problem, whether uh, we did it in a hybrid, the XSC, and right now we're in the adventure grade in the US and Canada, it's called the trail grade. It, it has a multi-terrain selector switch, kind of similar to what you have in the Tacoma up top. And you have different uh, drive modes. We are in um, rock and dirt right now. And what that's doing, it's working with the, uh, the all-wheel drive system and the torque vectoring. And it's gonna help us uh, manage some of these hills and going up and down. This also has hill descent control. Right now I'm going down a hill no brakes, no gas, and it's gonna handle all the braking for me and keep me uh, nice and in control. In addition, this adventure or trail grade also has a higher towing capacity than the other RAV4s. So it has extra cooling for transmission and engine and that stuff. So you can tow up to 3,500 pounds. So if you need your compact SUV for towing something, maybe a jet ski or a small camper, this is the one to get. All the new RAV4s, other than the new hybrid models, will be available at the end of 2018. The hybrids will follow up in the spring of 2019. Pricing for the RAV has increased just the slightest amount, but the content you get is so much more, like LED headlights, Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, and blind spot monitoring for the LE and UP models. Front wheel drive gas models start at $27,990. All wheel drive models start at $30,690 and go up to $40,690 for the top of the line limited model. The new trail trim or adventure slots in just below the limited at $38,690. Hybrid pricing will be out closer to the time when it comes out, but as we said earlier, it'll be very competitive compared to the gas versions, which should make it very attractive for people wanting not only more power, but also want to save some money at the pumps. Official fuel economy numbers have not been released at the time of this recording, but I'll be sure to include it in the video description when it is announced. The RAV4 has always been a leader in the compact SUV segment. In fact, over the last year or so, it's been named the top selling vehicle that's not a pickup truck in North America. And with this new iteration of the RAV4, with new styling, better driving dynamics, more utility, all those safety features with the standard Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, I think this new RAV is gonna cement its way up at the top for many more years to come. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up, and if you wanna see more everyday reviews, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.